Bitcoin is dropping right now here to the downside. And the question is, is this just another bear trap or are we going to lose market structure and will go lower over the next coming hours and potentially the next couple of days. That is something that I want to talk with you about. I'm going to show you exactly what I found and what I'm going to do about it right now. If you think that is interesting on this last Christmas day, then make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really important updates. And now let me start off here with my uh, Bitcoin position. I have opened earlier today at 42,680, uh, this Bitcoin position. When I opened it, the Bitcoin price went back up to like $42,860. So I was slightly in a profit. I think $2,200, something like this, um, was the highest that I was up in profit. And, but then Bitcoin continued to drop lower here. I got almost stopped out at $42,000. Uh, dollars. We went down to $42,101. Now we are going back up again. So maybe I got lucky and that was the final flush from where we are going back up now. So, But I must say I was expecting here this level to hold and that we don't see a candle body closed under the $42,235 level. So for now this level... Um, held and as we are now retracing back up i hope it will continue to hold but i have a stop loss here in place so if i get stopped out for me it's absolutely fine you cannot win all the time so um i'm protected here and i can basically um yeah stomach the amount that i that i would lose um, on that specific trade here but for now we are going back up so um let's hope that this continues because tuesdays is normally a day where the whole market is pumping. Statistically, you, you can look it up every Tuesday. Normally we go up. Um, if we are having now an outlier, that's fine for me because I made a lot of money on all the other Tuesdays. I want to have a look here at the overall um, amount of liquidations in the market. So in the last four hours, $23 million in longs got liquidated and almost $7 million in shorts. When it comes to longs, I think that is enough to give Bitcoin a small briefer back to the upside. And overall, we had here $181.83 million uh, in liquidations in total and over 100 in long positions. So that is definitely, in my opinion, enough uh, to see here the price turning around. Here's also something really interesting that I want to show you guys really quick here. So and th that is when when you're looking down here on on Bybit, look here. Here the top four exchanges uh, where most of people people got liquidated, Bybit is in the middle. So that means everybody that's trading on Bybit and has signed up with my link is potentially one of the smart ones because we have not a lot of liquidations on Bybit. Overall, only 4.63 million out of 100 million got liquidated um, in, oh, sorry, that's the last four hours. Let's see, 24 hours. Okay, now we are top three. Uh, 24 million um, out of 181 million came from Bybit, which is still not a lot, you know. So if, if you calculate that a little bit, so that is like 12% um, of all the liquidations came from Bybit. That is not excessive if you have here 10 exchanges. Or oh, how many do we have here? Seven, because Deribit has nothing here. I would say Bybit is still kind of in the middle and I think that everybody that trades on Bybit is then more or less on the smart money side because of course you're watching this channel, you know? So, and I told you, if we break lower, you have to watch certain levels and that's exactly what's happening here right now. <clears throat> and you should not be in a long, based on what I said yesterday. Uh, so you should be fine. And everybody that's not watching might have gotten here liquidated. Uh, let's move on here to the funding rates. The funding rates are still a little bit overheated for me too much, but with the next funding rate reset, um, and how many minutes is this? Can I see this up here? No, I cannot see this here, but I see it on Bybit. So let's have a look here. Uh, the next funding rate reset. Where is the timer? So in more or less six hours, we, we're going to get the next funding rate reset. 
I hope with that funding rate reset that the funding rates will cool, cool down a little bit more and uh, potentially getting a reset so that Bitcoin has more room to go back to the upside. Something really interesting also what I found is that on Whale Alert, no big wallets have moved um, anything to exchanges. So I, I can refresh that here again to see if here are any big movements. Okay, here are now just a moment ago, how unlucky must we be here? 30,000 Bitcoin, so 1.275 billion dollars got moved from an unknown wallet to Binance. So that could spook again the market, in my opinion. If you move so much Bitcoins to Binance, that um, that does not look good, guys. Really, it does not not look good if somebody moves so much Bitcoins to Binance. Um, Let's actually go and investigate who is this. So, but otherwise, I don't see a lot of Bitcoin flowing into exchanges here right now over the last couple of hours. So this transaction right now is the biggest one that I have seen here for today. I, I'm better at looking things up with these kind of errors. So it, that looks already like a cold storage wallet and they have cleaned the whole wallet. Also really interesting. So when did they move these coins to that wallet? in September. So they, they're gonna tell me there are free transactions on this wallet. They got them in September and now they are selling. That makes no sense to me that they are selling. Because if we go and look where the price was in September, uh, where is the higher time frame chart here? So let's go here to September. Okay, they potentially have doubled their money. So here September, 26,000. Yeah, okay, so they made like 70% um, on their money, but would I sell now when I know there's an ETF coming and it, we will go potentially much much higher than that? That that makes no sense to me to to sell now, especially if you have so much money. Why do you need to sell everything? I I believe something else is going on here. I'm pretty sure that these coins are not sent to Binance to actually sell them. It might be a temporary um, storage facilitator. Uh, because maybe this wallet got compromised and they had to move it quickly somewhere else. Um, but also, we, even without a test, they were just like, bam, let's send everything to Binance. Um, yeah, so I, um, I definitely believe that here is something else going on because that is um, strange that somebody cleans the whole wallet and sends everything to Binance and has these coins only for three months um, or even less, let's see. No, even just a month. Sorry, I was reading the, the, the date right because I'm European. So we read the date differently uh, than in the US. So yeah, that makes no sense at all. So these coins are there for a month and now somebody sends them to Binance. Like I said, I, I, I think maybe somebody wants to potentially spook the market. I can only speculate here, but I'm pretty sure whoever moved these coins is not selling them right now on the open market. It makes no sense. When we're going to the CME chart, and we can clearly see that uh, yesterday with the market opening, we did not get a big CME gap here. Super, super tiny uh, and technically already closed. And then we continued uh, to dump. Remember, I told you guys that this is one of the scenarios that I gave you, I gave you three scenarios. Either we get uh, a CME gap, uh, around $43,200 and from there we continue to move higher or we get no CME gap or we are uh, opening above the closing price and also going to nuke then and if we are getting new CME gap also going to nuke so and this is basically what we are experiencing here right now that we continue lower uh, here on the CME chart also here we basically touched the support level here already of $42,250 also on the CME chart is in alignment with um, the spot chart. When we're going then into the spot chart here in the one hourly, under one hourly, I have widened up a little bit this um, broadening wedge pattern. But if we are losing now, again, this downward sloping trend line and we get a candle close under that line here, I consider that um, broadening falling wedge as invalidated and w potentially we have then something like a massive, massive M pattern. So potentially massive M pattern. So if we would break $40,800, 
DM pattern would start playing out. And this would be really, really bad for Bitcoin. Yeah, so we could drop to $38,000 if that M pattern would be playing out. But for now, I don't see that. Um, I still see a lot of support here underlying for Bitcoin. For example, here in that area, there's support. And as long as we are breaking not this range here, I'm still confident that Bitcoin can move higher from here. And then we're going to see something potentially like like this here. I'm not really concerned. Of course, if, if that happens, um, I might get stopped out on my trade because we could wick under it briefly and then come back up. But as long as we are not breaking this low here, the market structure is still intact, guys. Remember that the market structure is still intact for higher prices as long as we are not creating a lower low, lower than $40,530. I'm also going to show that to you in a, in a moment. Uh, here on the 30 minutes chart, um, I was actually looking on lower time frames for uh, divergences. Here is now for now not a divergence on the 15 minutes chart, also not a divergence. Maybe on the five minutes chart, we get a scalp opportunity. Here is a small bullish divergence. This divergence has not played out yet, this bullish divergence. So this bullish divergence is playing out once we are reclaiming here this level. And that might be a scalp opportunity for you guys, if you want to scalp it. So once we are here in that zone, you, you can go and long Bitcoin for a scalp opportunity to $43,400. That would be my target for the time being. I think this is also, yeah, you see that is around the golden ratio and here around the 0 0.786. So that would be definitely um, a technical target for a scalp if you want to scalp it. But I would wait to enter a position. I have front run uh, this a little bit without looking at Fibonacci level because um, I got in before that drop happened and before we had this low here. But you see, here around the 0 0.786, that would be a good moment to get out of the trade. So and now if we are looking at this like this here. So here I, I would trade with like, what would I put here? 30, 40 X on that trade because it's a scalp, you know, so with 40 X, you would make almost 80% uh, and you can lose 20%. So risk to reward on that trade would be even higher. Uh, yeah, it's a one to three risk to reward trade. That would be absolutely fine. And guys, you know, don't forget, if you want to trade with me together, then do it on Bybit. Bybit is for me still one of the best exchanges, especially because they have a crypto debit card. So here you can see it actually in my phone without that I'm revealing too much. Nah, come on. Focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus. Maybe the screen is too bright. I don't know. Let's try again. Yeah, it just doesn't want really to focus. But ah, there, there we go. So here, there you see, there's my Bybit card. So um, you can uh, pay contactless uh, with it, for example. Um, and they have also cash back. So I really like the card. I'm using it daily right now for all my expenses. Um, and it's amazing. So it comes in this nice en envelope, guys. So if you want one, definitely go and sign up on Bybit, get $30,000 uh, bonus on top of it and trade with me there together. If you cannot use Bybit because you're in the UK, you are in the US um, or you are in Germany, Austria, and I think maybe Switzerland is also part of it. I don't know where you have problems with uh, leverage exchanges, then sign up on CoinW. Uh, they don't ask any KYC and uh, you can use them without a VPN plus that you get $5 on, uh, on top if you start trading there. So also really good uh, exchange in that sense. The same goes for uh, Femex. Uh, the bonus, I think, is right now $20,000. I'm not sure. So this is not accurate anymore. And Fairdesk has still the highest bonus in the industry, $120,000, plus that you can copy trade my trades there uh, that I'm giving absolutely for free. You just need to sign up on Fairdesk, search for AM Crypto, copy the trades that I'm doing, done. Also only with that specific link here. Uh, all these links are in the pin below and in the description below this video, guys. So let's go back here to Bitcoin. 
because I wanted to show you guys something else. Um, so there's our trade setup. So here, here on the four hourly chart, you can now see what I mentioned yesterday that we got a really beautiful retest of the uh, longest underlying uh, volume traded area, uh, historical area uh, for uh, Bitcoin. So we got at least close to it. And that's hence we saw here kind of like a nice bounce for now. But I would like to see now a reclaim of $42,565 um, to be, uh, sorry, actually, yeah. So $5 higher and close the candle above that price level so that we are still within our support zone here. And in the best case scenario, continue to move here sideways until we can push above the EMA ribbon again. So here's something else that you have to be now cautious with. I told you guys, if we break the EMA ribbon, we have to start to be cautious here with Bitcoin. I warned you guys about that. This could be just a potential fake out, but if not, and the EMA ribbon flips, and we see this going on until like after tomorrow, then Bitcoin might be in trouble. And um, I don't see then a massive, massive uh, new year pump for Bitcoin to try to close the yearly candle as high as possible um, as a candle close instead of with a, with a wick. So and then most likely here, $44,700 might be then the yearly high. I, I would like to see this to be broken over the last couple of days uh, for the rest of the year. But if we're losing now the EMA ribbon and price action is not coming back in the next 24 hours above the EMA ribbon, um, I might consider closing all my positions and opening a short position on Bitcoin because uh, we could get a really, really ugly um, start of the year before the ETF decision then. So you have to be cautious about that. So this of course will change if we reclaim the POC, the point of control, $43,700, if we can reclaim that and stay above that, then we will move into higher prices. But until then, um, until the EMA ribbon is reclaimed and we are above the POC, we should be a little bit cautious here. On uh, trading light, I just want to show you what kind of orders right now are floating around. The thing that gives me a little bit of hope that we are not breaking $40,000 and losing structure are underlying bids around $40,000. But also here, I want to warrant you to um, exercise a little bit of caution because the big orders that want to buy are at $38,000. So we have here some orders stacked from like 41, 40,500, uh, 40,000, even a little bit here at 42,012. Uh, but not a lot. So there, there are some cushions to try to catch um, the fall of Bitcoin and to give it a proper bounce back to the upside. But it, it might be not enough, guys. It might be potentially not, not enough. We have to see what's going to happen here. Uh, here to the upside, the sell walls got moved a little bit. You see now we have here $500 spreads that we did not have before at 44000 225 or actually $250 spreads, $44,500, then $45,000. Here, 46 is a little bit thinner right now than it was before. Then 47, again, really thick. And 48, also a little bit thinner than before. So these orders have a little bit shifted. But I can tell you, if we get here $44,500, if we are breaking through that level and then 45, that will be enough fuel to send the Bitcoin price to like 47 and potentially even higher. When we are going to our liquidation um, chart here, uh, what I wanted to show you is, first of all, we have here again a lot of degenerate gamblers that are uh, shorting with super high leverage that might get liquidated between 44,000 to 40. Yeah, $44,600, exactly there where the uh, sell orders are stopping that I just showed you. Uh, and then here underlying, if we really want to continue to go lower and liquidate some long positions, it might stop around $40,800. And there's also the line in the sand uh, for holding this um, whole upward structure. So I can actually make here a line. So and there you see. So if we lose that line, then we are definitely in big trouble. Um, unless we are losing it, uh, we should be fine in the short term. And what I also see here is a hidden bullish divergence. So if you look here at this, and we're looking at the same time at this, 
then we have technically a hidden bullish divergence that has not played out yet. So this line, of course, if I have to start drawing it like this at some point, because the price comes down here and closes some candles down here, then it gets less likely that uh, we are gonna see that hidden bullish divergence playing out um, and might be invalidated. But until then, uh, we might get lucky and some more Christmas gifts uh, potentially today with a nice bounce here into like the $44,000 area uh, if this hidden bullish divergence is playing out here on the four hourly chart. So it might not play out in the candle that we have right now, but in one and a half hours, we get the next one. If we are um, seeing here a Christmas miracle, it might be the next candle pushing all the way back up here. Then here, the free day, uh, sorry, here the liquidation heat map is also showing here how many shorts are piled up here from 44,000 to 44,212. So you see there are a massive, massive amount of shorts are piled up there that get liquidated. Um, only here, I can tell you there's like, wow, that's insane. Here's like $400 million worth of short liquidity. And here underlying, let's have a look at this. There's like 260 million in long liquidations. If we go just a little bit lower than where we are right now, maybe it got, got already cleaned. Uh, let me, yeah, no, that was already taken out. So yeah, if I would just go about the heat map of liquidations, then momentum is definitely to the upside to take out here this huge cluster of, uh, of shorts that are, that are getting liquidated all the way up here. Now, when we are looking at the 12 hourly chart, so we have lost the support of the um, rising wedge bottom. We can clearly see that. This can still turn out to be a fake out here as we had this also here, can still happen with the next candle pushing back up here to the upside. But if not, then we might have lost it. If we lose here the underlying support level of $42,170 approximately, uh, we will go down to potentially uh, here that low. And remember guys, if we are losing that, we are losing market structure. So I don't want to see this low to be taken out and also not this one here because then, uh, then it's cemented that we will go lower. So I don't want to see either one to be taken out here. So can we get an, another higher, higher low technically here? Yes, of course we can. Uh, would I like to see this to be the higher low? Yes, 100%. Uh, but we have to see what the market is giving us for now. I'm not too concerned yet. I'm not too concerned yet, but here on the 12 hourly, you see it a little bit better. Here is a massive M formation. So and also here, if I consider this, so here, this brings us even lower because it's a higher time frame. $36,300 would be the target of that. So I would definitely take that short once we are breaking uh, beneath $40,700 potentially. So from there, I, I definitely gonna take a short to $36,000. About the weekly, I don't really want to talk about the weekly right now. It's not interesting, but here the Bitcoin dominance. So that is something interesting, guys. While Bitcoin is going down, the Bitcoin dominance is going down, but altcoins going up. I have here some uh, altcoin positions open. Uh, while Bitcoin is dropping, these are going up. And let me actually check right now uh, on my phone, the positions that I have here. Did they recover? Um, yeah, I recovered $5,000 in, yeah, since I'm recording this video, I don't know how long this is going on right now because I cannot see it. Can I see it here on the display? Uh, no, not, not really. So, but yeah, these, positions here, they have recovered almost everything while Bitcoin is going down on, on Bybit. So guys, don't forget, if you want to trade it with me together, do it on Bybit. You see, even though Bitcoin is dropping, I'm heavily in the green, over $10,000 in the green. And also the trade that I gave yesterday to you guys, um, also this one is still in the green while Bitcoin is dropping. So I still have that trade, guys, on Binance. You, you should execute these trades on um, on Bybit. I only did not do it because on Bybit, I cannot use as much as leverage as I can use on, um, on Binance when it comes to the size of 
the position. So here I can use 20x leverage and can be with $5,000 in that trade. On Bybit, I cannot do that. So that's why I have some trades on, um, on Binance Open. So, but yeah, the dominance is dropping. So we are in altcoin season territory when it comes to the Bitcoin dominance right now. That's why we see um, major altcoins popping here. Uh, I don't know how it looks right now, but yeah, he, RSR is completely ripping it. Shit, I, I, I saw that. I saw that, that I, I wanted to trade RSR and now, now I missed it, but it's fine. I will find something else to trade um, down the line. So of course, not the whole market is green, but we see here some coins popping like SKL is popping and some other coins. Uh, here's still a lot of red in it, um, but this can change. If the dominance keeps falling, and Bitcoin starts going sideways, then we're gonna see a, a massive, massive rally for altcoins over the next coming days. Uh, let's have a look at the total market cap. Um, if we push here again back to the high of this weekly, uh, this week's candle, we were at 1.67 trillion dollars. Uh, that would be amazing because then I believe that next week could we could see continuation here to the upside. Also, if we just get the Doji as it is right now. It could also still indicate that we are getting continuation if the next candle starts out in green and pushes higher. So we, it could be a, uh, a typical continuation pattern here, what we are seeing here right now, unless this candle uh, pushes lower and goes to like $1.57 trillion or something like that and closes there the candle, then we might see a re reversal to the downside. And um, then I will also start scaling out of my uh, altcoin positions. But um, until then, it looks not all too bad right now for altcoins overall. Guys, that was a really quick update here from me for today. Let me see here uh, again a quick look at my position. Yeah, you see also here uh, the position is uh, getting more and more closer to be back in profit uh, or break even, however you want to see that. And it's a $450,000 position that I'm trading here right now, guys. So I'm playing here with serious money, as you can see. But uh, yeah, regardless, thank you so much for watching again. Don't forget, smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then again tomorrow.